The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for the evening news here on MBS, Antigua's most trusted Navy news. My name is Garfield Burford. A warm welcome. And I'm Terry Andrew. We begin with the latest on the manhunt for escaped prisoner Chanel Thomas. Police say they spotted him driving a vehicle in New Winthrop's around 1.30 this morning. That's right, Terry. The Police Special Services Unit, the SSU, reportedly saw him while on mobile patrol. The police say they attempted to apprehend him. However, he alighted from a vehicle with what appeared to be a firearm and attempted to engage the police. The police say they opened fire, but Thomas managed to escape in nearby bushes. No one was reportedly injured. The vehicle was seized and taken to the police headquarters. As the search for Thomas intensifies, the police are appealing to him to immediately surrender at any police station. Now, members of the public are also being cautioned against engaging the SKP as he is said to be armed and dangerous. Members of the public are also being reminded it is a criminal offense to harbor an escaped prisoner or assist them to elude, to elude authorities. Anyone with information on his whereabouts is being asked to contact any police station or call Crime Stoppers at 800 TIPS. That's 800-8477. Well, two men escaped without injury earlier today after the boat they were aboard caught fire. Dramatic amateur video reaching our newsroom show the two men aboard a dinghy in the open waters as the fire engulfs the 46-foot vessel in the distance. The Antigua Barbuda Defense Force Coast Guard says the blaze aboard the Rosalie sailing vessel began shortly after midday in the ship's engine room. The incident occurred some three nautical miles away from Deep Bay. The vessel's owner, Scott Livingston, was one of the two men aboard the vessel when the fire began. We can now get the very latest on this developing story, of course, looking at those dramatic images from earlier this afternoon. We can now speak with commanding officer for the Antigua Barbuda Defense Force Coast Guard, Lieutenant Commander Elroy Scarrett. Good evening to you, Mr. Scarrett. Thanks so much for joining us. The fire was uh, still raging sometime late this afternoon. Has it been extinguished yet? Yes, uh, the fire has been extinguished. It took the Coast Guard about two hours to extinguish the fire. Um, the Coast Guard deployed with its firefighting pump and uh, proceeded to uh, use water from the sea to, to up the fire. Um, we are currently in the process of, of salvaging the vessel. Uh, the vessel is now a hazard because uh, it is very close to the main shipping lane. Uh, therefore, it is very it is necessary for us to have the vessel removed from its present location and, and have it secured appropriately. Uh, we are getting we are being assisted by the port authority um, because the port authority has its tug that has the appropriate horsepower that can uh, uh, assist with the salvaging of the vessel. Uh, so that is what we're doing uh, currently. Right. And in terms of the kind of logistical operation, I'm pretty sure that that would have taken quite a bit of your resources as well to uh, get that fire under control. Let's talk with us through uh, the logistics involved in that, please. Well, the, the, it is basically um, having, uh, we, we are basically uh, unseen, or uh, we were unseen with our firefighting pump. Um, we proceeded to uh, extinguish the fire with the use of the pump. Um, and so we, we, it took us a, a good part of um, two hours uh, to have the, the, the vessel completely extinguished. Um, and the other logistic has to do with the salvaging of the vessel. Um, we are getting the assistance of the Port Authority, and so we are uh, in the process of having the vessel relocated to appropriate location. Right. And based on what you know at this point, I'm pretty sure that it's early in the investigation at, at this point. In terms of the fire safety protocols that were being uh, followed on board that vessel, the fire was an electrical fire. How much do we know at this point in terms of uh, uh, how it started, really? Well, what we, our pre pre preliminary investigation thus far um, uh, points out to us that the, the vessel started in the engine room. It was an electrical fire. Uh, and so what happened is that... Um, when the, the, the crew of the vessel realized that something was wrong, uh, it was too late because the, in opening the hatch for the engine room, the fire immediately engulfed the, the, the vessel. Uh, it came out of control and they had to abandon the vessel. Right. Finally, your, your comment, your word, your advice 
uh, to other seafarers at this point following what, of course, was a very unfortunate incident. Uh, thankfully, nobody was hurt. But your message generally to seafarers in relation to fire safety? Well, uh, as it relates to fire safety, uh, the first thing is for individuals to be very cautious, uh, be very mindful of, of um, the, uh, the maintenance, the maintenance uh, processes and ensure that uh, all uh, electrical wires are appropriately insulated and um, they are safe uh, to op uh, operate um, at sea because uh, you never know what could go wrong. Uh, a, a simple stray of a wire can, can um, you know, be very devastating for a vessel. Indeed, uh, sage advice there as uh, usual. Thank you so much, uh, Commanding Officer for the Antigua Barbuda Defense Force Coast Guard, uh, Lieutenant, Co Lieutenant uh, Commander Edward Scarrett. Thank you so much for joining us this evening and sharing the very latest information, giving us the information that the vessel, uh, the fire has now been extinguished. And of course, you're now salvaging that vessel. Thanks much. But Pickett's primary school students have added space to receive their lessons now that the Works Ministry has handed over a new classroom to the learning institution. Jimmy O'Shea has our story. Works Ministry Permanent Secretary Ambassador Clarence Pilgrim presents keys to Education Director Clay Brown, who passes them on to school principal Shower Quinn Monday morning. The keys are for a new grade six classroom at Pickett's primary school. This school which was built in 1974, 48 years old, is seeing this addition to enhance its learning experience. The new classroom is large enough to comfortably seat the 21 students who will begin receiving their lessons there almost immediately. One of the ingredients of ensuring that children receive uh, a quality education is having a, a learning environment conducive to that quality. And a part of that is ensuring that they have adequate space, and especially in the COVID environment. Principal Quinn says one of the school's grade five classes has been operating on a shift system due to space challenges. So they're coming in, they're alternating on a daily basis, and I'm thankful. So what will happen now with this new classroom is that the grade six will relocate to that room and the grade five class now will be able to return in full tomorrow latest and they will reoccupy the original room in which they were located. The education director says there are also plans to expand several other school plans across the country. Jimmy J. Roche, ABS News. Thanks so much, Jamie. Now, Ambassador Colin Murdoch has welcomed the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, between the World Health Organization and the Commonwealth Secretariat on Development Issues. The OECS prominent representative to the United Nations was in a virtual attendance of the signing ceremony earlier this week. Of course, the World Health Organization is the United Nations' premier global health body. Our story this evening from Ursula Chans, Jr. Ambassador Colin Murdoch has lauded the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding, an MOU, between the World Health Organization and the Commonwealth Secretariat. Speaking at this ceremony on behalf of Caribbean states, the OECS is the permanent representative to the United Nations, applauds the foresight behind the signing. We wish to commend the vision and hard work that has brought us to this point. We wish to commend the visionary and robust leadership of Dr. Tedros and his team in very difficult circumstances. The two parties have agreed to work together and strengthen the exchange of information on seven priority areas. These include promoting universal health coverage and primary health care. Ambassador Murdoch says the region looks forward to the benefits. This MOU creates a multiplier effect. This MOU provides value added that would be impossible were both organizations working alone. This MOU broadens the scope of cooperation for tackling the pandemic and its pernicious effects. While touting the capacity of the MOU to set the standard for similar agreements, Ambassador Murdoch sees the potential for equity. He shares the tale of an encounter between Prime Minister the Honorable Gaston Brown and Commonwealth Secretary General Baroness Patricia Scotland. The distinguished Secretary General of the Commonwealth once told my Prime Minister in highlighting the inequitable response among countries in relation to the world's pandemic. We are in the same storm, but we are not in the same boat. I believe that this MOU puts us that much closer to being in the same boat. 
and that can only be a good thing. The MOU was signed by both Baroness Patricia Scotland, Secretary General of the Commonwealth Secretariat, and Dr. Tedros Adhanam Ghebreyesus, Director General of the World Health Organization. For ABS News, I'm Ursula Charles Jr. Expo 2020 continues in Dubai with the Antigua and Barbuda Pavilion continuing to receive significant interest and exposure. Director for Tourism in the UK and Europe, Cherry Osborne, is satisfied efforts are going well. We've had great exposure from having, you know, Antigua and Barbuda at the World Expo, um, and, and our pavilion has had about uh, 100,000 visitors. She says the local contingent is converting the exposure they are receiving into long-term tangible business for the destination. A week of activities has been planned to engage with travel brands, airlines, and media in the United Arab Emirates. We kicked off with a trade event um, and where we hosted our travel agents. Um, we also hosted influencers. Um, we met with the airlines and um, Emirates Holidays, whereby Antigua and Barbuda and also Bahamas are the only two Caribbean destinations now that have featured. And Osborne says Antigua and Barbuda could potentially unlock a new market. Antigua and Barbuda has the culture. Um, it has the people. They've met the personalities. They've um, tasted our local food, they've experienced our culture, um, and I, I think uh, what we've realized in this market in particular is more about the relationships, um, mm -hmm. keeping those relationships, and I think it will generate long-term business. An ABS News update now. Scores of disgruntled employees of the National Solid Waste Management Authority, the NSWMA, remained off the job for a third straight day at Wednesday as they demand outstanding overtime payments. They were locked in a meeting earlier today with their union representative and NSWMA general manager, Darrell Spencer. That developing story from Marcel Charles Jr. It is day three and the National Solid Waste Management Authority employees are adamant. No money, no work. The drivers and loaders' concerns center around long-delayed retroactive overtime payments dating back to 2020. Man is stifled. You understand? And how can't every minute promising, promising since year before the last and last year and so. Well, it's not going to be pick, uh, picking up for quite a while until we get our pay. We want our outstanding overtime money. And if we're not getting it, we're not going out to work. So the country will be dirty for a long time until we get our money. The workers have refused to leave their base at the sanitary landfill at Cooks to retrieve waste from around the island. Several uncollected pockets could be seen lining the streets. Hugh Joseph of the Antigua Trades and Labour Union, the ATNLU, is representing the workers' interest and is seeking resolution to the issue. The situation is that we have had um, overtime occurring um, for a significant period. Um, dating as far back as 2020. Management had an agreement with the employees in December. Um, the, we were not a part of those discussions where um, they agreed to pay two payments of $3,000. What led to the work stoppage is that subsequent to that, the authority was not able to indicate to the workers how do we plan to address the outstanding for 2020. Joseph insists a significant portion of what is owed should be paid at soonest rather than the pledging of later payouts. We understand the total amount owed exceeds $50,000. According to Daryl Spencer, National Solid Waste Management Authority General Manager, a meeting will be held with principals and the response on a payment schedule provided to workers by 7 a.m. Thursday. We definitely have to go back to PAC and um, um, from the discussions, the you know, look at something that is reasonable that for all parties involved. So we, uh, we well, I'm going back to office now, and in the morning, well, my, my management team and I will meet sometime during the course of the day and make a presentation to the, the workers tomorrow morning in the presence of the union. For ABS News, I'm Ursula Charles, Jr. Now, cleanup and waste disposal after the staging of events will now be more efficient and controlled. 17 wheeled garbage bins are to be made available for use by patrons of large events. These were procured through a partnership between the Royal Commonwealth Society of Antigua and Barbuda and the Halo Foundation. 
Now, President of the RCS Antigua and Barbuda, Her Excellency Lady Williams, was extremely appreciative of this gesture. She thanked the UK government for its continued support in addressing environmental challenges. Lady Williams said the donation will allow the foundation to make extra bins available at no cost to any organization staging an event that would require additional receptacles for garbage disposal. Resident British Commissioner Lindsay Thompson expressed delight in support the RCS and Halo Foundation with this initiative to help keep the country beautiful. She said this initiative is one of many projects funded by the British High Commission support supporting the country's shared environment objectives. Still to come in this newscast, more of the stories that we're tracking for you nationally, including this one. One of this country's foremost OBGYNs clears the air amid concerns about COVID-19 vaccines and infertility. You'll be hearing from Dr. Raymond Mansour on that issue. Plus, later, India's High Commissioner to Antigua and Barbuda, His Excellency Dr. KJ Srivinivasa, speaks about ongoing areas of assistance to Antigua and Barbuda from the second most populous country in the world. Coming up on the ABS Evening News, on air and online. Stay with us, please. At Nagico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long. But after all these years, you just can't let go. At Magico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. Yeah, what the place that I sell AC? You mean LL supplies? Yes, Jack. They move. Oh, great Scott. Well, they're gone now. Don't worry, they're not too far. They just right up the road before Kennedy. LL Supply Limited, your number one supplier for air conditioning and refrigeration parts, has now moved to a fresh and convenient location in order to serve you better. Visit us on Utility Drive, Casada Garden, or call 5626562. LL Supply Limited, we stock quality parts. Welcome, a versatile and dynamic SUV, the Toyota Rays. Pick your engine, the fuel-efficient 1200cc or the vibrant 1000cc turbo. Accessorized with an 8-inch display, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Amazing luggage space and monthly payments as low as $716. Jump into a Toyota Raze today. Raise your style. Raise your confidence. Raise your vibe. Hardy Motors Limited on Factory and American Roads. Call 462-1062 or visit us on Facebook, Instagram or HardyMotorsLimited.com. Top Ranking is having a Valentine sale on all Valentine gifts and accessories. 10% store wide, plus no savings. New arrivals include Valentine teddy bears in different sizes, a wide assortment of Valentine chocolates, roses, and a floral arrangement. Say I love you with a Valentine gift basket, mugs, vases, plaques, greeting cards, and lingerie. We also have perfumes and cologne sets. You will find something for everyone. Remember, on 14 February is Customer Appreciation Day and a special token will be offered. All COVID-19 protocols will be observed. 10% store-wide, plus more savings. So check out the big Valentine sale at Top Ranking on the Old Parham Road. Remember, at Top Ranking, high prices always get a spanking. Janserve is committed to keeping Antigua and Barbuda safe with our mass sanitization program. Our methods are safe, effective, and efficient, and eliminate pathogens, mold, bacteria, and viruses, especially COVID-19. We are introducing the EPA-approved Victory Innovations Electrostatic Sprayer and Vital Oxide Disinfecting Sanitizer. Our solution is even safe to use around children. It's odorless, easy to use, and will disinfect areas and surfaces for up to five to seven days, depending on application. The electrostatic sprayer atomizes the molecules of the vital oxide to adhere itself to all surfaces. It's much more effective than wiping. 
We are committed to using the most advanced sanitization methods for the safety and health of everyone. For the cleanest clean, contact JanServe today. JanServe is a service mark of the Akima Group Incorporated. This week on Conversations, we speak to Lionel Max Hurst. I was told by my wife once that she doesn't wait well, uh, reasonably so. So I, I decided to ship my Volkswagen from New York City to Antigua. Join me, Natalie Clark White, for Antigua and Barbuda's prominent people stories and be inspired. Thanks so much for staying with us here in tune with ABS Evening News. Obstetrician and gynecologist Dr. Raymond Mansour is making it clear there is no link between COVID-19 vaccines and infertility. He gave the assurance while speaking on ABS's popular uh, car, uh, program, House Calls, last evening. Studies that looked at COVID-19 vaccines throughout the reproductive uh, process. So trying to get pregnant, already pregnant in all three trimesters and postnatally there's found no impact to the story from a vaccine point of view. Um, so there's no hesitancy. If you're trying to get pregnant, please take your vaccine. If you're in your first trimester, second trimester, third trimester, and you have not started the process, consider starting it at that point. And postnatally, go for it. There's no path. Antiguan Barbuda can count on further support from the Republic of India as the two countries look towards strengthening their bilateral ties. That's the assurance from Indian High Commissioner Dr. K. J. Srinivasa. Antiguan Barbuda's COVID-19 public inoculation program began last year through a donation of Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccines. We have decided to offer more vaccines if Antiguan Barbuda needs so. We are also working on a $10 million line of credit for uh, solar energy uh, production in Antigua and Barbuda. We are also working on improving the uh, education scholarships, the iTech scholarships, uh, up to 10 scholarships. India's top diplomat to this country is as his country has also pledged to assist the Twin Island states in its bid to recruit nurses and specialist doctors to further improve the health sector. Uh, we are willing to also send experts in the various fields uh, which Antigua and Barbuda might need, like, say, water purification, uh, distribution of uh, electricity, etc. So we... Dr. Kejir Sunivasta there. Now, the Health Ministry has received a donation of personal protective equipment, PPE, from another corporate citizen. Let's stay with the subject of healthcare. The Antigua Lottery Company donated 4,200 KN95 face masks to the ministry earlier this week. The items were presented to accounting coordinator Rochelle Phillip and account development representative for the Antigua Lottery Company, Mikhail Simmons. Now, Deputy Chief Medical Officer Dr. Terry Ann Joseph and Director of the Pharmaceutical Division, Alfred Attil, were on hand to receive the donation. When we come back from this break, we'll turn our attention to news overseas. One of those stories that we're tracking very closely for you uh, co comes to us from Barbados because that country's Prime Minister, Mia Amor Mockley, defends amendments to the Constitution regarding membership in both houses of Parliament. It's a bicameral legislature that they have there in Bridgetown. And internationally, all remaining COVID restrictions in England could end later this month. We'll tell you about that story when we come back. Stay with us. <laughs> 